Hello, uh, I'd like to talk about um, Tai Chi and the lymphatic system. Uh, we have to go over a few things and I'd always like to encourage you to check out other blogs um, uh, that uh, Julie has done uh, explaining other principles. Um, what we're going to discuss today is kind of a byproduct of learning the form correctly and practicing the form correctly because we're applying the uh, Tai Chi principles, the Yang Tai Chi principles. Once the Yang Tai Chi principles are applied to your movements, um, that's really when a lot of benefits, you know, a lot of uh, great things kind of start to happen. Okay, so we're not going to go over those uh, principles so much today. We're just going to kind of assume that uh, you have a, a teacher who can teach them to you correctly and that you're practicing those. Uh, so we're going to start with our feet parallel, about shoulder width apart. It's see, because you can do some of this with me. It's best to experience it rather than just conceptualize it. It should be in your body. It should be in your heart. Um, just thinking about an exercise doesn't really uh, give you too many benefits. So with my feet parallel, shoulder width apart, I'm just going to start to turn my waist. Okay, And, and we've covered uh, rotation of the hips and all of that uh, previous. Uh, we've also covered uh, Dongjin, keeping the uh, crotch rounded and wrapped, and uh, the knees staying over the feet, uh, gliding over their uh, respective feet in the direction of their toes, and then everything starts to kind of uh, loosen up. Okay. On this model here, I'm going to just uh, show you, just in case uh, you don't really you don't know what's going on in there when we're talking about rotating at the hips. Um, we're actually talking about the hip joint. And the hip joint is this ball and socket. Now the ball and socket has a lot of uses or a lot of uh, potentials, capabilities. Um, two of those are flexion and extension. So like when you're walking, you know, kicking a ball, uh, running, walking back and forward, uh, this allows it to move forward, okay? And then you have adduction, abduction, which brings it from side to side, okay? So that ball and socket allows your leg to move side to side. It also allows for rotation inwards and rotation outwards, okay? And that's basically what we're doing here is we're rotating the hip joints inward and outwards. I'm gonna hold both thighs so that you can see this full, or this, uh, this bone, see it's like at an at a angle, 45 degree angle. And kind of in the middle is this ball and socket. And that in Tai Chi, in Yang Family Tai Chi, that's where we rotate from. We're rotating from this area, okay? Uh, when we rotate from this area, see, then we're not twisting or wrenching the spine, which we, we never do in Tai Chi. In Tai Chi, the spine has always remained straight, hence all your principles, raising the crown, dropping the tailbone, plucking up the back, sinking the chest, um, relaxing the waist, all of those things, is to keep the spine straight, okay? Because we're not gonna twist, torque, or wrench the spinal cord or the central nervous system. Matter of fact, we want the central nervous system as calm and as relaxed as possible. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate on these hip joints because it allows us to turn the waist like a wheel rotating on two ball bearings, uh, like a torrid, like a, like a wheel, it's a wheel. The Tai Chi classics say that the waist is a wheel, the spine is an axle, of course, you have a, a second wheel up here, and actually a third, but we're, we won't uh, get into that today. Okay, so when we're uh, exercising in our Tai Chi, uh, making sure that whenever we turn, that we're allowing the hips to sung, the hips to sung uh, san, the uh, relax, just kind of like uh, disperse and relax and release. And then that releasing is providing movement. Okay, so it's not like I'm pushing or forcing myself in action. Uh, it's more uh, passive, I guess, like an inaction. So you're just relaxing, letting that crease fold, the inguinal fold. And then as you turn, you're letting that crease fold, that inguinal fold, okay? And this uh, bone here, and that center of that hip joint, that's this fold, see? When you sit into a chair, you climb stairs or even if you just have healthy hips, you'll just always have an inguinal fold. And the center of that fold is the ball and socket. And that's typically where we're going to turn from. Okay, this is your inguinal fold. That's your inguinal canal. That's your ball and socket. And actually the only artery that pumps to the, uh, into the legs, into the foot, your femoral artery. 
Now also, this area is home to the body's first largest cluster of lymph nodes. So when your uh, body's trying to purge and clean itself, um, you know, drain any infection or anything out, it needs a nice healthy lymphatic system. And Tai Chi, uh, the elders of Tai Chi, the young elders, um, use these methods to, uh, to, to stay healthy, to stay robust, to, uh, to keep a nice, uh, healthy composure, healthy body, okay? You don't need to know the lymph nodes um, in order to get the benefits, but what you de do need to know is you need to know how to uh, move the body using the principles to access these different tissues, okay? Because that's what exercise is about. You go to the gym, you pick up a weight, you know you're lifting for the, your muscles. You want your muscles bigger, you want your muscles more ripped or toned, okay? Every exercise should have its targets. In Tai Chi, it's a circulatory exercise. So our interests are in circulating Chi, circulating lymph, circulating uh, blood, circulating fluids in general, okay? Circulating nutrients, circulating health uh, through the body, circulatory exercise. So our emphasis is on relaxation. When I start to relax into one side, this side will fold and this side will unfold, okay? And again, the knees are always staying in the direction of the toes. These principles are necessary. Once I'm folded here, I release, and it'll just fold into the other side, and then this side will flat. So always one fold, one flat. So one of your basic principles is to know yin and yang. And, and as you continue into your practice, yin and yang really means he kai, that's closing and opening. One will close, one will open. One will fold, one will close, one will open. Now this largest cluster of lymph node is getting a gentle squeeze, okay, and then a, a release. It's getting a gentle squeeze and then a release. Now the lymph nodes and the tissues in the body in a very relaxed, hydrated body, everything works like sponges. Again, where, you know, however much water, 70, 80% water, it's about getting that water to circulate through the body to be healthy. Um, so what we want is we know that uh, these lymph nodes are collecting fluid and if I have a sponge in each hand, every time I fold, I squeeze the fluid out of the sponge. This one absorbs more fluid. Then when I turn, this will squeeze out the existing fluid and this will uh, absorb more. And that's why Tai Chi is so beneficial to the health or one of the reasons, okay? Because we're always alternating yin and yang, always closing and opening um, the hips, uh, the ribs, the flanks, the, the shoulder nest, the knees, uh, the whole body, okay? All these, all these areas are squishing and releasing, squishing and releasing, and it's promoting that, uh, that fluid, okay? All right, so let's look at the board here and uh, just kind of give you a rundown. The first one uh, we'll talk about, or actually we've already talked about number two, but uh, We'll start here at number one. Number one is the heart number one acupoint, Ji Chuen. It's in the center of the armpit, um, as well as the shoulder nest. Now the shoulder nest is this web, kind of this uh, squishy area here. Kind of like on your thumb, you have a little web there, and then you have that lung point squishes in, like a little acupoint. There's a little acupoint here too, okay? And uh, also underneath the armpit. So these two points, or these two areas are gonna be our, uh, our focus, if you will. Okay, when we talk about the shoulder, it's never really the top. Remember your principles say to sink the shoulder, drop the elbow. That allows the, uh, the bottom of the armpit and the shoulder nest to activate and uh, start to work, and we'll get into that. That's your second largest cluster of lymph nodes. So the groin is the first largest, the armpit is the second, and uh, Bladder 40, Wei Zhong, the back of the knee is the third largest cluster of lymph nodes is back here. Okay. And in, in previous videos and in our knee videos, we really emphasize never pushing the knees forward, how bad that is for the health, how there isn't one study or scientific research or anything that actually says pushing your knees forward is good for you. On the contrary, uh, as we discussed before, that's not very good for you. We're going to look into that deeper, you know, not only tearing tendons or, or ligaments or anything, but how to get, uh, every time you do Tai Chi, it should be a, uh, a circulatory exercise. You're circulating the Chi and the fluids. 
Okay. Um, going back to number two momentarily. Folding into one side and then unfolding. Okay, this very important. If I do a movement, if I do a Tai Chi movement, say a grasp the bird's tail to the left, see this side will fold and this side uh, will open. And then as I change, the other side folds and then this side uh, opens. See, and then as you continue on with your form, that's what we mean by yin yang. So the left side, these two fold, ribs open. These two unfold, ribs close, and you just keep changing. You just keep going, uh, close and open, open and close. Okay? So the, the trick with the hip, uh, before we move on to the armpit, is that the knees can't bow in. They can't uh, do this, because then there's no, there's no squishing. There's like no squeeze. Remember, there's little sponges. So the fold, that fold is squeezing the fluid out of the sponge. When I release, it absorbs more, and on the other side, I'm uh, squeezing. It's very light. It's uh, very, very light, it's just kind of little, like a squish even. It's a little squish, little squish. Okay, so when you're doing your forms, like if you're not really emphasizing this area, you're not really exercising it. Okay, if you go to a gym and you, and you start exercising your arms and then you leave, your legs didn't get a workout. You have to actually focus on the legs to get a leg workout. It's no different with anything else in the body. Whether we're talking about the uh, femoral artery or the lymph nodes, the venous plantar foot pump, you know, the lymph nodes up here or the artery that uh, goes into the arms here. Whatever we're, we're uh, talking about needs to be kind of emphasized when you're exercising. Okay. It's okay in the beginning. You're learning the forms, you're kind of zoning out, you're just mimicking the movements. That's necessary. That's absolutely necessary. Um, but as time goes on, you don't zone out. There's no zoning out. You're zoning in. You're, you're being conscious and paying attention to what you're exercising so that these things can flush, that these areas are, uh, you know, squished and released. And, and so you're getting the most out of your form. Okay? All right, let's talk about the armpits now. So armpit and lymph nodes, of course, uh, so important for breast health, so important for just general, general health uh, in the uh, upper torso. With your principle, you need the elbow and the shoulder to stay down, just like you needed the uh, knees to stay over the feet, okay? So if I'm folding into the shoulder nest, or I'm folding away from it, or I'm folding into it, or folding away from it, this area, just like this area, are folding, okay? And then this area, just like this area, releases or unfolds. So it folds and then unfolds. On a four-legged creature, these four folds are pretty much the same size, but because we live on two legs, this is significantly smaller, but it's still there. It's still there. And that's where your lymph nodes are, that's where your artery is. And uh, a lot of times when you're working the lymph, all the time you're working the lymph, you're working your cardiovascular, you're working your blood vessels, you're working the blood. Um, a lot of times, most of the time, they're in the same areas, you know, for more artery lymph nodes, uh, artery right here, and then lymph nodes. So you're actually exercising both. You get, a, you get a twofer. Okay. If my shoulder's up, okay, now try to look up here. Actually, I'll come like this. Okay, if I start to do this and my shoulder comes up like this, Okay, I'm not getting any squish down here. Ha part of this is uh, when we sink the shoulders, drop the elbows, it means that this bone here isn't being held up, that this bone is just dropped. And because this bone is dropped and then it starts to rotate, that's when things down here in the armpit start to squish and release, squish and release. Now a couple things, you want to keep your shoulder and elbow down. You need the roundness of the armpit, just like you needed the roundness of the uh, uh, crotch down here and uh, so when you're starting to do this you're actually feeling like a little squish and then a release just a little it's it's so uh, gentle it's subtle okay Tai Chi's low impact exercise which means there's no high impact everything is a low impact but that doesn't mean that it's not useful it doesn't mean that it's not really really exercising you okay so sometimes we turn it's like when we do in uh, cloud hands, we turn. 
Let me turn. Let me turn, and you see I just keep changing. Okay, and that's side to side, and then sometimes more like a, a front to back, but still turning into the side, turning your rings or your torso uh, into that side and away from the side. And then you do your next movement, which will just take this folded uh, hip and shoulder nest and then fold the other side uh, while it uh, unfolds the side. And again, it's just the sponges squeezing, releasing, squeezing, releasing, circulating, circulating. Okay, um, one more thing that we do with the uh, armpits is just side to side, but it's also uh, front to back. Now, Grandmaster Wei Shiren said it's like having a little sticky bun in your armpit. You don't want to burn the armpit uh, by holding it too much, and you don't want to drop it by having the arm out too much. So not too much in, not too much out, but kind of right in the middle. Everything is just relaxed. In the end, it's just Song San. It's just completely relaxed is, is the uh, goal. So you look at like the first movement of Tai Chi, um, see the hands come out or come up and then they come down. This is also coming out, yeah, up and out and then down. And I get that same squish and release from the arm moving up and down as long as I'm not uh, tense. Okay, you have to apply your principles. The longer you do Tai Chi, the more benefits you get because the more principles you keep applying. Okay, it is important to, uh, to find somebody who can teach you the principles correctly so that you don't waste your time and that you can really just start getting the most out of the exercise as soon as you can. Um, okay, so that's the idea between, behind the armpits uh, and the groin. Now the back of the knee will actually work with the groin, okay? So we talked about the groin going uh, adduction, abduction, flexion, extension, rotation, in and out. Um, front to back, kind of like a flexion extension. It's going to rotate so that you can sit. Okay, so your hips, they rotate so that I can sit. This is another way. So if I get just a little bit of a squeeze there, a squish in the hip, uh, when I turn, then it's flushing. Okay, as long as I'm emphasizing a very relaxed release you know, I'm, I'm releasing the weight of my body onto that leg um, and that's creating a little bit of pressure into those, uh, those sponges and then I'm releasing that, okay? Also, even just stepping forward and backward, okay, or shifting front to back, you're still getting that same little squeeze in one and release in the other, okay? Or even going out to the sides, like cloud hands, you know, or, or other sidewards movements. But there's one more uh, aspect uh, and that's like when you do cross hands, uh, uh, creep low like snake, things like that. So like creep low like snake, when you go down, um, the groin folds. So that's, that's my mode of going down. I'm only going down as much as this will relax, okay? Uh, again, previous uh, videos we talked about not uh, leaning when you go down, uh, but staying vertical, always staying vertical. That verticality allows me to sit into the hips doing creep low like snake, folding one side, unfolding the other, okay? And then as I come forward, they switch, and I have the up and down, okay? So I have the up and down. Cross hands is another up, squish, down and then back up. So even down and up. The down and up ones are the ones where you can really access the, the, the uh, back of the knee, the bladder point, um, or the lymph nodes back there. See, so just something as simple as when I sit into a chair, as long as the weight's transferring from my feet to my hip, it's going to squish the lymph and then release it. See, it's important that there's always that release. It's in the hips. If I stand up, it goes through the knees, creates a little compression, and then the weight goes to the feet, and then the knees are released again. So just things like sitting and standing and using the knee as a weight transferring joint through the back uh, helps with the blood flow, helps with the chi flow, helps with the lymphatic flow. Okay, so you can see that the form itself, it's a, it's a vehicle. It's a method to apply principles, like any exercise is. And by applying the principles to that vehicle, that's how you maximize your benefits. You maximize your health, okay? You can see also, there's no need for 
Tai Chi for the lymph system or Tai Chi for the cardiovascular system. Tai Chi for this or Tai Chi for that. The young elders, even the, the Chen elders and all of the, uh, the uh, Tai Chi elders who created these arts knew what they were doing. It's fantastic that Mayo Clinic, that uh, Harvard, that all of these Western places are starting to see and understand and get the benefits. But understand that you didn't uh, make those benefits. These benefits have been around since the elders have been doing these exercises and the people they learned them from, spanning back thousands of years applying Chinese culture to these exercises. Okay? Every movement in Tai Chi, again, whether you're doing grass to bird's tail or whatever movement, always has a yin yang to it. The way that your shoulder nest and your claw are set up the way that your, uh, your ribs and your flank are set up, the way that your hand is set up, all of these things are meant to keep circulating, keep uh, squishing and releasing and purging the body. Okay, that's, that's intentional. We've always done that. It's very intentional. And uh, everything in the body, from the armpit, the, the claw, the back of the knee, everything does this. Okay. If you're inter very, very interested in finding out more about uh, how to move different parts of your body and be all-inclusive. So that's why I say it. you may find it hard to do this today because maybe you don't have a lot of the other principles yet. Okay, but study the other principles. Yang Cheng Fu, The Essence Application of Tai Chi Chuan, translated by Louis Swain, has a, a, you know, a mention of them in uh, Yang Cheng Fu's introduction. So there's lots of places online that you can look at these. And again, let me refer you to Julie's blog, TaiChiOnlineClasses.com. Just check out our blogs. And uh, more often than not, we have videos that also instruct you. And for much more detailed instruction, I encourage you to try our course. You know, take our course. Our course, you get nine videos a month, and every video is packed with this kind of information because we want to make sure that people out there are doing Tai Chi correctly and maximizing their benefits. Okay. Thank you.